Surely, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Robert and dearly beloved Christian friends, God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We gather this day to remember the life and the life given for the rest of eternity to Robert Stevenson. We grieve, of course, his absence from our physical world of ours, cherishing the various promises of God, especially as St. Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. That hope given to us through the promise of God through Paul is also given and realized to Robert. So our hope is in the promises fulfilled by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And just as Christ was raised from the dead on the third day, so will Robert and all who believe and trust in Jesus Christ will be raised on the last day and ushered into eternal paradise. Robert has that hope of eternal life with Christ, which he has now realized. And this is the comfort we need during this time of his physical absence. We need to be reassured and reminded he is in a much better place because God always keeps his promises. So the family chose the following passage to bring us much comfort from Joshua. In speaking to the people of God, he says, Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And it ends, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, at the time Joshua was speaking these words, yes, God had fulfilled many promises. He had brought the people of God out of slavery from Egypt. He had ushered them into the promised land. He was giving them the promised land. But as people, we often get distracted with many things of this world that God has blessed us with. And Joshua would soon be departing himself. His absence would bring about also a grief among the people. And so he uses these words to reaffirm to the people, this is the God who saved you, who delivers you, and who will continue to keep you. And so he says, with the many distractions in today's world, don't follow them. We serve the Lord. What a beautiful parallel for us today as Robert would also not want you to be distracted by the things of this world, but to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And as the end of that text says, and serve the Lord. You see, Robert knew the God's protection. He knew the fulfillment of all the promises of God because he was baptized into Christ. He knew how God delivered them from slavery of sin, death, and the devil. And now, Robert is with Christ in paradise. But God does not leave us alone. After taking a great pillar of the church, God does not abandon us, but God continues to protect us in our earthly life. Yes, we grieve, but we grieve with hope. And God sets up three estates in which God administers his protection. The first estate, so to speak, is the country. As we remember, all countries are set up by God to protect the people from all sorts of evil and violence. Robert knew the beauty 
of having this first estate. The beauty of having a gracious country in which he was willing to serve in the United States Marine Corps. Thanks be to God. The second estate in which God continues to protect, shelter, and nurture us, especially as we are growing, is a bit smaller than the country, a bit more intimate than the country. It is the family. Because the family is the place where God does indeed protect us, provides us a father and mother so that we may grow and that we may be taught. Yes, the family is the place where God's word is taught. Oh, and you saw this actively in Robert's life also, as he served his own family as a loving husband, a loving father, a loving grandfather, and great-grandfather. But more than that, and I'm sure the family would agree, how many times have you heard the promises and words of God coming off his lips? Yes, he took a very active role in communicating that faith to his family that God entrusted to him. Yes, God uses the estate of the family to protect his beautiful creation. This is a beautiful, also interesting segue into the third estate in which God does indeed protect his people. It is the estate of the church, because in the church, God protects his people now through word, his word, and sacraments, feeding God's people. After being clothed, as the, the funeral Paul reminds us, we are clothed through holy baptism with the right robe of Christ's righteousness. Just as this white Paul is covering Robert, right now, it reminds us we are clothed in Christ Jesus, holy baptism, and to be fed on a weekly basis, Christ's own body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. And it's even better because we have an opportunity to continue to teach that, in which not only did Robert teach that at home, but he also taught that in church in leading many activities at church so that the name of Christ would continue to be proclaimed. Robert was a doer and a leader in pointing others to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, Robert is resting from his labors where true rest is only to be found. But in the midst of his rest, we have his physical absence that we struggle with. But in the midst of that struggle, we rejoice. We rejoice in God's deliverance as God rescued us from sin, death, and the devil and protects us through these holy estates of the government, the family, and the church. So also, we value God's protection as Robert did. And so we join with the family and shouting that, yes, on this day, we will continue to serve the Lord. We will not lose heart just because things did not go our way, but we realize that God is in ultimate control. And as our epistle remi reminded us for today, what can separate us from the love of God? The answer, absolutely nothing. So we take our stand with Christ Jesus as God used Joshua to bring God's people into the promised land. God uses the next Joshua, in case if you didn't realize that Jesus is kind of that term for Joshua. Jesus the Christ to bring Robert into paradise in which as the thief on the cross here that heard that precious gospel message, Today you will be with me in paradise. So we rejoice that the promise of God is indeed accomplished and fulfilled. So we go in peace and serve the Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts 
and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.